Black History Month Short Film Challenge 2008, it is a, a mouthful. Basically, the Lucian Film Initiative uh, has been running this program for the last three years called Black Film History Challenge. And this is the third year, and this year we had numerous applicants to the, pro to the process. And we've whittled them down to two. And those two this evening, in terms of the awardees, are Katie Milner and Cheryl Marshall for One English Winter, and Lawrence Coke for Silent Heritage. Uh, a lot of people participated in the making of our film free of charge gratis. And um, we didn't have the money to, to pay people. And I just want to thank everybody that so generously and kindly donated um, their time and um, an effort into um, making our film. And so this story doesn't, I mean, it's not owned by anyone. It happens to many people who have to move from where they live to somewhere else, leave their loved ones behind and um, work and save money. And it's not just a story that's specific uh, to, to black people, to people from the Caribbean. It's all economic migration. You've got the people coming over from Poland now and from Eastern Europe and they're having the same experience as this man that came over in 1948. Are you going to be able, you going to be watching any of the film screenings tonight? Yeah, yeah, I really want to watch them, um, especially the one about um, Black and Asian interracial relationships because that's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I really want to see that one. My question goes to actually, it'll go to Katie and Cheryl and also um, Lawrence as well. Um, what made you choose that partic particular subject, and did you find it difficult to find contributors? It, it was different, diff, sorry, difficult to, at first to find um, Asian people who were happy to go on camera and talk. Um, we had a lot who spoke to me off camera. I, I think the most prevalent ones are that at one time I was involved in a discussion about race and um, racial slurs. And they, they were asking how, who's been called a nigger, who's been called a paki, who's been called this, who's been called that. And a lot of the black people in the room had raised their hands when they said about the packy thing, which had a lot of people scratching their heads. I will say that there, there are a lot more extreme views that I heard, um, a lot more from both sides, more so the Asian side. Um, I would say that I went into this as much as was possible, as objective as, as I could. And also as well, it was very difficult for me as an individual to find a bridge between the Asian community in this country. It just kind of hit me one day that I don't see myself as Asian or Indian and I don't feel a connection to that community. But my grandmother was and my whole mum's family tree are and I don't have any problem with fitting in there. So it was just, why is there that bridge? Why is there the wall there? So that's where the motivation was for me. Highlight for me was um, performing and getting my film show. That was beautiful for me. But my family and my friends here as well, so it's cool. I got funding for um, some projects in the school. And I was paid to go and introduce filmmaking to children in the school. Okay, so it's set in the 80s, based on two young Aboriginal girls. It's based on a poem talking about different hairstyles. Um, so they explore their identity through hair. Yeah, I like it. Um, like the first one. The first one was good, obviously done by the same guy. So that, I enjoyed it. And uh, the last one, Black Boy, was, uh, what, what was it called again? African Man. That's the one. Yeah, I thought that was really good as well. It was informative, it was thought provoking, it was educational, it was pleasing as well. It was nice. Well, my message for Black History Month is people should start looking back into the history and know about their heritage and everything. You know, like the second film in that had a good point, you know, people don't know how long ago people, black people were here in this country and the kind of connections between Africa that they had before slavery. Since doing this documentary, um, I still see myself as a black man because I think that the way that the world perceives you has a lot to do with how you kind of define yourself. And even though you shouldn't let it, I think that being black is a very unique experience in terms of how the world deals with you. But I'm very proud of my Indian heritage, very proud. And one of the things that came out of it for me was, wherever Asian people go in the world, they succeed. When they went to Jamaica, they went in at the bottom of the pile. And within 100 years, 150 years, the, the Indian community in Jamaica, as in a lot of places around the world, are among the most affluent um, in terms of education levels, finances, everything, at all levels of Jamaican infrastructure. That makes me proud. I'm proud to be a part of that group. 
and yes, I do think that the Asian community and the black community should celebrate their, 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 um, what they have in common. Because as we saw in 2005 in Birmingham with the race riots, um, you know, I mean, to me now, obviously, it has a different perspective than it did before. It's been very nice seeing the context of the film. You make something on your own, and it's very nice to realise that there are lots of other people making films with similar issues using similar actresses and effects. Which is weird that anyone can do it, I suppose. And then we did it on a small amount of money. And, and you can do it on a small budget. And what we did is we actually, in the film you'll see, we went out into the community and there were young people that were saying, oh, let's, let's have a go in your film. So, okay. The highlight for me was the film called Black Diamonds and the highlight for me was a caption at the end and then if I don't say it right forgive me but it was people should be people should be judged by their character and not their colour colour and that's beautiful. So do you think a lot of young people should be getting involved? Well absolutely. I think this is vital. I think this is vital, you know, because I wish I I mean I write screenplays now, yeah? I know absolutely nothing about the film. I know nothing about the technical aspect of movies. You with me? I, I couldn't even hold a camera. You with me? I couldn't, you know, a, a, a boom like this. I mean, you know, I can't, I've tried to do it, I can't even do it. You with me? So, you know, these, these little skills are vital to, um, to the community. But they should come in, you know? They should be, they should be battering down the doors to come in to be part. You with me? of this establishment. It's vital, you know, so, and it's free. So thank you guys, man. I think it needs to be more community based. I think they need to have more things in a community like this going on so people can showcase their talent. Um, I also think that, um, I don't know, the council, maybe even the government should invest more money in it so it's, it becomes more publicised and better and bigger for next year. I think they should publicise it much more personally. I think they should do much more grand scale event. So it's not, as they were saying in one of the movies, not just a one month of, but it should be all year round. So I think they should do bigger scale events. I think the kids said it really. I think there needs to be more out in the community. Really, they, they you know, it comes from them, yeah. and it's kind of on all different levels. So it's all very well kind of having all these nice events. It's good in places like this, but sometimes it's preaching to the converted. Well, it's just education, isn't it? Like the, um, the youth will be involved in anything that they see as being fun. So if you put it out out there to them in a fun way, and you know something that they can see happening, they want to be involved. In it. it needs someone or something or some uh, uh, establishment like yours every month to have something similar to this. Are you with me? I'm very grateful to have seen your films, thank you very much. Yes. And uh, how does an event like this get more people coming to it? I'm sort of slightly disappointed, you know. I mean, I didn't make a film, but I'm kind of confused that a free event like this hasn't, isn't sort of more crowded. I'm not yeah, trying yeah. to be negative, I'm just um, curious how, how people go about raising more awareness. Yeah, I think that perfectly illustrates some of, because this is an excellent event. The quality of the films and the standard of the films were excellent. No, I just wanted to say Sorry, something Daniel. from last year, we were here last year, I don't know how it's marketed or how it works, but last year there was a much bigger turnout than it was packed out, so I just think maybe it is maybe it is because it's raining, whatever, but I could talk from last year. Credit it, Yeah, there was a lot of support last year. <laughs> that unfortunately is the challenge that we face as a venue in terms of having to market, market something like this. But um, yeah, hopefully next year, bigger and better, Black Film Month, Ch Short Film Challenge 2009. I work for Channel 4, so I go to a lot of these screenings, and I just wanted to thank you all for um, playing such a huge part in black history, because you are part of history, you're the contemporary history, and I hope that we'll be watching your films in 20 years' time. I just want to say thank you for that. And, um, it's just a comment, just to say that it's fantastic that it is based on Lucian, but it'd be so nice if these films could get shown. Um, yeah, in further places, just so more people could get to see them. Because the things that I get to see, it, it, it's not like this. And it would just be lovely if more people could get to see it. And just thank you is what I want to say. Thanks a lot, all of you. You've done a fantastic job. Teach something other than Martin Luther King. Because I have spoke to the user and every single one of them. <laughs>
tell me it's my own thing. I think there were a lot of schemes that, like we were saying, there was, sometimes it's specifically all generated into one focus time, Black History Month, and it doesn't seem to be something that is throughout the year. Um, but I do think it's getting bigger and better, and I do think there's a lot more support. My main message for Black History Month is it's not about black or white, it's about history. We're a very diverse people, we cover a very wide mm -hmm. spectrum. It's a beautiful thing. I don't think a month does it justice. Um, personally, I think a month is long enough. I think it's what you do with the time that's important. So I think you've got the whole year to kind of like research, teach the kids. Do you know what I mean? You don't need a Black History Month to teach the kids about Marcus Garvey, about black nationalism, or whatever you want to teach them. But the month is there for us to kind of like celebrate what we have achieved. So I don't feel like we need to kind of like um, go overboard with anything. A month is there. I think a month is enough, it's my opinion, if you do it well. I want to say thank you to the filmmakers. It's been an excellent experience working with Jamal, Jamal, Ruth, Jamal Bennett, Lawrence, Ruth, Lawrence, Cheryl, Katie, and Daniela. Thank you for taking the time to come this evening. Check out the films on itvlocal.com. And again, guys, thank you for coming. The bar is open, drink up, enjoy, and you know, come back next year bigger and better. It's a great project and I'm so delighted to be here to represent the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. So thank you very much and hopefully see you next year. I'd just like to thank BHM Film Challenge 2008 for creating such a, an informative event and watch out, big things are happening. BFM, on the way. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank the BHM Film Challenge 2008. Thank you, BHM Film Challenge. Black History Month Short Film Challenge 2008. It's been great, thank you. Yeah. Woo. Thank you.